good morning now we are discussing about the different concepts of quantum mechanics part 2 under which we study the wave function we know the pressure variations results in sound waves the variations in electric and magnetic fields results in electromagnetic waves whereas the variable quantity that characterizes de broglie wave is called wave function wave function characterizes what is known as de broglie wave pressure variations characterizes sound waves in the sense sound waves will arise due to the variations in the pressure or otherwise known as the pressure variations electromagnetic waves will originate because of the variations in electric and magnetic fields similarly the de broglie wave will originate because of wave function and this wave function is denoted by psi of r and t this psi of r and t is a wave function it is a function of space variables r and time t space variable r is again a function of x y z x y z coordinates and t is the time factor and this psi of psi of r and t gives the probable position of the particle in space at any instant of time t so of r t gives us the probable position of any particle or or of that particle in space at that instant of time if this psi of r t is large the probability of finding the particle is also large in the sense the probability of finding the particle at that particular point in space and at that particular time is more the chances of finding the particle at that particular time at that particular point will be large will be more if if psi is large if psi is small the probability of finding the particle at a point in space at a given time is very less this is about the wave function now coming to the significance of wave function this wave function is a measure of finding the particle at a particular position and at a particular instant of time it gives the possible information about the particle the basic properties of wave function are listed over here number 1 it has no direct physical significance that means to say that it can interfere with itself number 2 it cannot be measured as a as it is a complex quantity since the wave function psi function of r t is a complex quantity it cannot be measured and it is a function of wave and time coordinate and this wave function describes the behavior of a single particle and the wave nature of it so these are the physical significance or these are the significances of the wave function now coming to the probability density the probability of finding a particle is described by the wave function and it is proportional to the square of that wave function the probability of finding a particle in space at a given instant of time is directly proportional to the square of the wave function that is i proportional to magnitude of psi square or that is equal to psi to psi star where psi star is the complex conjugate of psi the amplitude of psi may be positive or negative but negative probabilities are meaningless and therefore we are taking 
in the modulus of psi. We consider only the positive values and we neglect the sign. Now let us derive an expression for the time dependent Schrodinger equation for a free particle. We are deriving a Schrodinger equation for a free particle and that too time dependent. Time dependent. So in order to derive time dependent Schrodinger equation for a free particle, we consider one dimensional wave having wave function psi for any particle which is moving freely along positive x direction. We are considering a free particle moving along positive x direction having a one dimensional wave function psi. That psi is given by psi is equal to a exponential minus i omega into t minus x by v where a gives the amplitude of the wave omega is the angular frequency and v is the linear velocity of the particle. We know that v is equal to nu into lambda where nu is the frequency, lambda is the wavelength, v is the velocity. Therefore the above equation becomes psi equals a into e power minus in place of omega we are writing 2 pi nu omega is nothing but 2 pi nu. 2 pi is here and nu is taken into the bracket. One nu is here and the other nu will be here. It will be x nu by v. x nu by v. x nu by v. If I take here, it is x v equals nu lambda x. Therefore, it is x nu by v will be equal to x by lambda. x by lambda. So it becomes x by lambda. x nu by v will be equal to x by lambda. And also we know that e is equal to h nu. Also we have lambda equals h by p or 1 by lambda equals p by h. Therefore equation 2 becomes psi equals a into exponential minus 2 pi i into into e, 2 pi i into e t minus p x whole divided by h. This nu t becomes nu t becomes e e t by h e t by h so the first term becomes e t by h minus the second term becomes x by lambda it is 1 by lambda is p by h in the sense p x by h p x by h so h there is common denominator and that is taken outside e t minus p x whole divided by h and this equation 3 describes a wave which is equivalent of the unrestricted particle having a total energy E and momentum P. Having total energy E and momentum P. Now let us differentiate this equation 3 with respect to, with respect to T once and X twice. So let us see how it is differentiated in the next slides. Now here we have equation 3. This equation 3 is differentiating. We are differentiating this equation 3 with respect to with respect to time once. So differentiating we get d psi by dt equals minus exponential a into exponential minus 2 pi i into et minus px whole divided by h into differential of this portion. Into differential of this portion is minus 2 pi i into e by h into dt by dt is 1. Therefore, we get this. Therefore, this can again be written as d psi by dt equals minus 2 pi i by h into e and this whole term is psi into psi. 
therefore therefore e psi is equal to minus h by 2 pi i into d psi by dt again this can be written as minus h by minus h into i minus h into i divided by 2 pi i square i have multiplied and divided by i therefore i get therefore i get h into i divided by h into i divided by h into i divided by 2 pi i square into d psi by dt into d psi by dt this i square is nothing but minus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 becomes plus and therefore i h by 2 pi but h by 2 pi is nothing but h cross h by 2 pi is nothing but h cross therefore it becomes i h cross into d psi by dt this is equation 4 we have obtained an expression for energy similarly if we differentiate equation 3 with respect to p twice we get an expression for x so you can see here we are differentiating equation 3 with respect to x twice we get d psi by dx equals minus this is the first step a into exponential minus 2 pi i e t minus p x whole divided by h and differentiating this portion differentiating this portion only we get minus 2 pi i minus 2 pi i p by h or it is minus of minus plus plus 2 pi i 2 pi i p divided by h next differentiating again we get d square psi by dx square d square psi by dx square is equal to again the same quantity will be repeated therefore it is 2 pi i p by h whole square into a exponential minus 2 pi i into e t minus p x whole divided by h or this term is psi this is psi written here and this term is 4 pi square p square by h square and i square is minus 1 i square is minus 1 or p square psi is equal to minus h square by 4 pi square into d square psi by dx square h square by 4 pi square is nothing but h cross square therefore p square psi is equal to minus h cross square into d square psi by dx square calls this equation 5 expression for p equation 4 gives expression for t sorry expression for e and this expression for e and expression for p is substituted substituted in equation 3 you can see here we have e and p and for both e and p we have expressions 4 and 5 and though those 4 and 5 can be substituted over here now at speeds small compared to that of light total energy of the particle is the sum of both kinetic energy and potential energy given by equation 6 the kinetic energy is p square by 2m and the potential energy is v now the potential energy v is a function of x and t and therefore applying the the wave function on both sides of equation 6 we get e of 6 is equal to p square by 2m of psi plus plus v of psi that applying the wave function on both sides of 6 we get equation 7 now substituting for e and p from equation 4 and 5 in equation 7 we get e psi is equal to ih cross d psi by dt that is equal to p square is minus h cross square d square psi by dx square and 2m is repeated plus v of psi this is the equation of time dependent Schrodinger equation this equation 8 is called the, the time dependent Schrodinger equation of a particle now if we extend the same to three dimensions it becomes h cross d psi by dt that is equal to minus h cross square by 2m into the previous slide 
we have only this part d square by dx square. Now, because of three dimensions, plus d square side by dy square plus d square side by dz square is included plus v of z. This is the only difference you can see here. Therefore, it becomes h cross d side by dt equals minus h cross square by 2m plus this complete term is re rewritten as grad square psi plus v of psi. This is the time dependent Schrodinger equation of a particle in three dimension in space or otherwise. Now, for a free particle, no external forces will be acting on it, so the potential energy of the particle is zero. There will be no potential energy on the particle there, since there are no external forces acting on it, since the particle is a free particle. So the total energy of the particle will be only due to the kinetic due to its kinetic energy. Therefore, we get I H cross D size D psi by dt that is equal to minus h cross square by 2m into d square psi by dx square is the time dependent Schrodinger equation of a of a free particle of a free particle. Similarly, the time dependent Schrodinger equation of a free particle in three dimension is given by equation 11. Given by equation 11. This is about the time dependent Schrodinger equation of a free particle. Thank you.